everyone, welcome back to my channel and today we we're going to be talking all about the UCAT. Now the UCAT is a difficult test, it's made up of five sections and we're going to be going through five tips uh, just to help you guys smash the UCAT and get top marks in what is quite a difficult exam. It's something that you'll never have done before. Um, I've done a few videos on different sections in the UCAT so if you want to go check them out I can put them in the link below. Um, I'll put one of them on the screen somewhere in either a tag or a card and um, yeah, maybe go watch that. But these are basically five tips to smash your UCAT. So, um, the first tip I would say, UCAT is very time pressured, so what you want to do is to be spacing out your time. Now that's very difficult to do so, um, you obviously have a great framework of what you want to do and what time length, and so you might have an idea of doing this in half an hour, this in 25 minutes, or this in half an hour, but you know, it's difficult to stick to that. Once you get into the exam and you come across a difficult question, being a prospective medic, you're probably quite intelligent, so you'll want to get that question done and correctly done, which will probably take you over your time limit. So one of the trickiest skills to do here is to be strict with your timing. So as opposed to saying half an hour for a section, I would break it down even further, so say a minute per question so it's easier to keep track of. If you say a half an hour for a section, you could get to question 10 out of 50 and be 20 minutes through and think, you know what, I'm still within my half an hour. Obviously that's not ideal because you've still got more than you know, 75% of the questions left and you've only got about 10 minutes left to do them. So it's not ideal. I would recommend breaking them down into the smallest possible sort of section, so one minute per question. So that each question you have one minute once it's done, move on and then flag it on the UCAT um, website. And the second tip I would say is to really focus when you're revising on the sections that you'll know you're not good at. Um, it's difficult to admit when you're not good at a section, but you are. I was horrifyingly bad at um, abstract reasoning, which if you haven't practiced yet, you will come to understand as the bane of your life. Um, it was incredibly painful. The section is very different. It's a very abstract, um, I guess it's not a great way of describing it, but it's sort of a non-verbal reasoning section and it's very tricky to do. You know, first time around, you'll have no idea where to start, what to do. But, you know, I would say initially start off, just do a whole paper and then, you know, do it two or three times, two or three different papers you can find online, you know, in any sort of website. Then track your data for those two, three papers and notice, you know, I'm losing marks in quantitative reasoning. And then what you want to do is come back to that, look at that section and practice on that section only. So look at questions from that section only and really prioritise that until you get to, you know, good marks. And a good mark, I would say, for that section is to consistently get above 700 or 750 if you want to be really good. But yeah, I would really recommend doing that because it's easy to just sort of focus on the sections that you're good at because it feels good to know that you're getting high marks, but it's not going to be useful because when the exam comes around, you'll obviously do really badly on the sections you haven't revised and do really well on sections you have revised. Whereas in the UCAT, it is obviously, you know, all scores are equally weighted in terms of each section, so you want to do well on everything. loads and loads of practice papers. Um, the way I got my score, which I was really happy with, which is 2,980, or I think it was roughly 745.5 or something like that on each section, was just doing a pass paper every single day. And then after that, I would do, you know, practice in a section I knew I was bad at. So, you know, not only does it give me, you know, repetitive forced learning of this section, so, you know, I'm used to this, this is pretty much second nature coming to the exam, I've done like a hundred of these papers before, you know, doing one of the exam, I can knock one out easy. And as well as that, it gives me up to date, you know, progress on where I'm at. So every day I get a sort of check in on where, what I'm doing. Um, okay, so how's my performance been going, you know, every single day. If you do a practice paper every two weeks, you're not getting a very sort of uh, real-time progress check and you could do a paper you know one week and you could do really well on that but you know one week after that if you haven't done a paper you don't really know where you're at so I would highly recommend doing a paper every single day um, in the morning wake up do one for two hours and then just take a break you know half an hour one hour break and then come back and do your normal structured revision or whatever you want to do so if you have an idea of Resources. Very important in the UCAT is to find the right resources. You want to find papers from somewhere which you can trust. Um, most websites online give perfectly you know, good uh, resources. I would recommend two, the UCAT Consortium website. Um, fantastic because obviously they are going to be giving you the paper on your exam day, so they have the most realistic questions. Um, the other place I would say is the best place uh, for UCAT preparation is Medify and it is a uh, godsend for the UCAT. It is absolutely incredible. Um, it basically has 
in, in a huge number of papers. You won't run out, don't worry about that. It gives you up-to-date progress um, for your UCAT in terms of how you're doing. You can track on it um, basically how many papers you've done over the last few months. You can check how much practice you've done. You can check your scores in comparison to averages from every single paper that you know the Medify users have taken and you can see where you rank. And it's a really motivating way, you know, it, it's basically like having a personal trainer for your gym or you know and it's really helpful i would highly recommend using medify and um, it's a fantastic resource i'm not being sponsored either but i would still really recommend Med Med medify it's a phenomenal website please go and use it it's really good the final tip i would say is to relax and this is sort of comes at you from various angles during your practice you don't want to panic um, and do anything drastic so for me don't rush into anything don't you know get adrenaline soaring and then try and do something stupid you know first of all when you're setting your UCAT day be realistic you know I set my UCAT day and wasted a lot of money because I set it in the beginning of August and realistically when it came to the end of July I was like I was thinking to myself okay I'm not gonna be able to do the UCAT that well so I postponed it to September, which did cost me a bit of money, but was immensely worth it. So I would say definitely take a, you know, t take a chill pill, relax and think. There are lots of factors to decide when to take your UK exam, you know. There are factors about when you're going to be revising, uh, whether you want to take the BMAT exam and when you're going to revise for that, what universities you're going to apply to, so whether UK is going to be really important in your application. So loads of factors to take into account. And people generally say to take it really early, you know, don't delay it. I actually don't agree with that. Um, you know, if, you, if you're the kind of person like me who needs a lot of revision to do well on a paper and, you know, needs to feel really confident when you're revising towards the latter stage of revision, take your time with it and no one's going to rush you into doing the UCAT exam. And the good thing is a lot of people just book up the early slots. No one ever touches the end slot. So I would really consider, you know, taking your time to revise your UCAT. So don't rush into anything. Um, if, you, if you think you can do it in July, fantastic. Do it in July. You get time to revise your BMAT, you get a holiday. Great. But I would say just don't rush into it, relax. And also on the exam day, relax, you know, it's a really good exam setting, you know, you get walls either side of you, so you're in your own little, you know, space, it's not nervous at all. Um, obviously this year's online, so whether it's still online next year, I'm not sure. But however you're doing it, be in a relaxed space and just chill out. If they allow a bottle of water, take it in because it can really help. Make sure you go to the toilet beforehand and bring everything with you. There's nothing worse than having that panic when you get into the exam hall thinking, oh my god, I haven't brought my foreman with me. Um, make sure you leave everything next to the front door, you know, the week before, so that it's there ready, you can relax, you can go in, do the exam and do really well. So yeah, that's everything I'd say, um, nothing else too much, hopefully this was a quite a short brief video, um, just five quick tips on what to do for the UCAT. If you've got any more questions, drop them in the comments below, uh, feel free to contact me on Instagram, and yeah, see you in the next video, peace!